Hi everyone, today I'm going to be giving you a commentary over some timelapse footage of me creating this character concept which I'm calling Sergeant Butters. The final blend file can be picked up on Gumroad for a low price, so you can dissect the content and use it to assist with your learning. As for the purpose behind this concept, I've recently been inspired by the alternate history work of Ben Nicholas, and I've also just watched 1917 and Jojo Rabbit, both of which are excellent films. The World Wars are a couple of my favourite periods of history to learn about, and of course as I'm sure you know I'm a bit obsessed with science fiction, so the intention behind this character was to combine those two elements and see if I can come up with something cool. Alright so let's jump into the commentary. I started off by using a base character which has already appeared in a few previous videos. The first thing I want to do is make the clothing for the character. To do this I'm placing vertices around where the seams of the clothing would ideally be. Most of the body will be covered up by this, so the more surface area we cover with clothing, the less hard surface modelling needs to be done. I'm not paying any attention to the number of vertices I'm placing around the seams, and that's because I don't care about what the geometry of the surface is going to look like. Afterwards I'll end up sculpting over the top of it, which will destroy the geometry anyway, so it really doesn't matter at this stage. When I've done enough of the seams, I start selecting the boundaries and filling them with faces using Alt plus F. Then I want to add some curvature by pulling vertices out using proportional editing, which can be toggled by pressing the O key. I used a knife tool to draw intersecting lines over the surface of the region to make more vertex points to pull. Again this is very messy and completely destructive, but it won't matter once we start sculpting. At this point I'm just looking to get the general shape. The arms are more tedious to do, so I actually need to be a bit more careful with the number of vertices. One thing that's nice about having the subdivision surface modifier active at this point is that when we create new vertices, we can see a dark interpolated line between them that helps to plan the layout. Occasionally the normals may need to be recalculated because the mesh is not manifold. One way to get to this is by selecting all the faces and then using the search function to find the recalculate normals operation. The search function is accessible by pressing F3 by default, but I have mine bound to the spacebar because I use it all the time. Connecting the parts under the armpits is where things get a bit tricky, but we just need to make sure the mesh is actually closed before moving on to sculpting. I've skipped ahead a bit to where the other arm has been completed. Now I'm just making some final adjustments and duplicating the object as a backup. Then I'm quickly previewing the shape in the EV render viewport and setting up a separate material for the basic clothing. And now we can move on to sculpting. I'm just playing with the dynamic topology settings to get the appropriate values. The detail flood fill option can be helpful here. Once I've got it ready, I start masking out the open end parts so they won't get pulled in strange ways, and then begin smoothing out the mesh, which has now become triangulated. In some places, the body underneath will intersect with the clothing, so I want to inflate those areas accordingly. Now we can see the shape has been smoothed out, and the triangulated geometry is much more consistent than it was before. I make a backup of this mesh as well before moving on. I take a line of edges from the backup of the seam object and use it as a guide to create a new object. This is going to be a piece of cloth that buttons will be placed on. I then duplicate a vertex from the mesh, then separate it to create a new object. This will make sure the modifier stack is copied over. I then use this to start drawing out the collar section. With the solidify modifier already added, it's easier to visualize the shape. And now I'm making a basic button object and pressing Alt plus D to create more instances, as opposed to pressing Shift plus D which will only duplicate it. By creating instances, any changes made to one of the objects will be applied to all of them at the same time. Now I want to do some folded sleeves, so I'm going to duplicate the collar object which already has all the modifiers I want, and make some basic adjustments to the mesh to get the right shape. Recycling object data like this is a good way to save time. Now for some extra details. I duplicate the shirt buttons to create a version for the folded sleeves and then start working on the belt. For the buckle, I inset the faces on each side and use the loop tools add-on to bridge them together. Again, for the belt itself, I duplicate a vertex from the collar object to keep the modifier stack, and then build geometry from there. And then I'm just adding some extra smaller details to make it a bit more believable. When previewing the render, I feel like the clothing is a bit flat, so I re-enter the sculpting mode and start adding some creases to give the impression of some folding.
While making some final adjustments, I start playing with the scene colour. If you've watched my interview with CG Boost, you know that I'm currently in a phase where I'm trying to avoid using so many blues and purples in my work. Red is one of the most attention grabbing colours, and having a white strip will make it easier to identify hard surface contours in the final image. For the character outfit, in the end I decide that a fully black outfit looks a bit too evil, so it's changed to something with more neutral earth tones. I'll add some more clothing details to further date the outfit, and then move on to playing with mixing ambient occlusion and generated noise textures to get a procedural dirt effect. This has to be completely procedural because I'm not doing any UV mapping or texture painting. The same effect is duplicated to the trousers, but the vector mapping for the material is adjusted to make it look like more dirt is present by the feet. Now we change scene to where I'm starting to make the robot head. I scroll through Pinterest while doing this to get a couple of ideas, but the shape is mostly improvised. Throughout the modelling phase, I keep changing my mind about things. I'm not sure whether I want the head to look old and boxy, or more organic with lots of curvature. I end up going for more curvature in the finished piece, but you can watch the decision making process as it happens. I make frequent use of the hard ops add-on to sharpen and add bevels to the constituent objects. Considering this is supposed to be a kind of alternate universe wartime style, I decide it can't be too smooth and self-contained, and instead more industrial so some joints and connecting pieces should be exposed and visible. I'm purposefully bringing cable shapes to the front of the headpiece because it'll make an interesting surface to look at in the lighting. As I said, here I'm creating exposed joints to fit the idea. Even though the final render will be mostly from the front perspective, this will make it interesting to look at from the sides in case of any alternate perspective renders. What I'm sketching here is an improvised idea for some antler type structures, although I'm not completely sold on the idea. I want to test it, so I start drawing up a shape which will be mirrored to the other side. I'll use the box cutter add-on to add some imperfections, although I won't spend too much time on this as I know I'll likely throw it away before the end. I copy and paste the meshes into the original file and translate them into the appropriate position. I use a cube and a difference boolean operation to remove the placeholder head from the body mesh and then I'll preview the test shape in the rendered viewport. I think it's a cool idea, but it's a bit too much for this piece. Maybe it's something I'll revisit in the future in a more fantasy setting, but for now I'll get rid of it and readjust the head to suit the rest of the body. Now what I want to do is make some basic shoes. To do this, I'll copy faces from the original foot and make them into a new mesh. I'll sculpt over the top of this to create a throwaway reference mesh to model around. So just to clarify, I'm not sculpting the shoe, I'm just creating a filler shape that the shoe will be modelled around. Creases on the surface will help me to identify where to place edges. Before modelling the actual surface of the shoe, I put some placeholder laces in the rough position where I think they should go. Now using the face snapping mode, I start manually modelling around the reference shape. I'll solidify it and add some extra edge loops and start making some additional details. The shoe object does not need to be super detailed, this character is a robot after all, and the feet will be out of frame for most of the renders anyway. Some quick detail is added to the belt, and I move on to assigning materials to the metallic head. Again, I love using ambient occlusion for colour variation in the crevices. It's at this point I have an idea to add some kind of cane or walking stick object that the character can hold onto. After posing a new hand object, I boolean out the original hand and replace it with this new one. Then I move on to adding some extra detail to the stick, which includes some material variation. I decide that the robot head is a bit too boxy, so I remove some of the outer framing and add some extra details to the exposed surfaces. Now moving on to making some basic gloves. Ultimately, I want to cover up all parts of the body except for the head. I quickly sketch out some straps for the glove pieces. The cloth by the feet is too uniform, so I scrunch it up with some quick sculpting, and then move on to adding some extra tiny details to the character. I'm continuing to make small additions and adjustments, and this is where I toy with the idea of using some light, earthy colours for the outfit. I'll experiment with creating a gradient of different colours powered by the ambient occlusion, which allows us to provide a colour range that responds to the curvature of the mesh. The cloth for the legs is given an extra layer of dirt, and then we arrive at the finished piece. There's a lot of room for extra detail, changes and alternate variation, but as with most pieces, I don't want to spend too long with it and instead move on to other projects. After all, I'm not a character artist and I've got lots of add-on updates to get working on. 
Okay, so that's where we're going to wrap this up. Remember, you can get a finished copy of the blend file from Gumroad by using the link in the description. All of your support is greatly appreciated. We don't often do time-lapse videos on this channel. In fact, I might have only done one or two before, so let me know if you enjoyed this format. Remember to follow me on social media to keep up to date with new releases. And if you like, you can also join our Discord server. There'll be a link in the description. And on there, you'll be able to take part in discussions, share your work, and get sneak previews of upcoming projects. So thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.